think with time marching on, we'll turn to the next question, which we were alluding to earlier, is equally frequently asked uh, in the clinic of us uh, whether our diet can change our response to treatment, our likelihood of toxicity with the various agents, or the risk of melanoma. And for this, uh, Melissa Wilson, who's uh, uh, on screen now and a uh, uh, major part of our outpatient unit, uh, will speak. Uh, Melissa, take it away. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Hi, good morning. Um, I'm Melissa Wilson. Um, I've been one of Dr. Kirkwood's PAs now for going on almost two decades um, at Hillman. And um, I know a lot of the participants that I see on here know all of us, um, but I just want to say hello. Um, I also wear a second hat for AIM. Um, I function as their ask an expert. So in any of the instances, especially on the symposium, if there are other additional questions that come up after it's over, um, you can always reach me um, by their um, online, you know, you can go online to AIM's website um, and there's links to get to me if you need me. So Let's start with the presentation. I'm gonna share my screen here. Okay, hopefully everyone can see my slides now. So we're gonna talk about diet while on treatment. This is a question that I get, I can't even tell you how many times, both um, in the clinic and, and through AIM. Um, everyone wants to know what additional things that they can do to help themselves um, you know, while on treatment. Um, one of the things that I want to stress, and of, of course, I'm not a nutritionist, um, but as, as of going through all the research and preparing for this, you know, talk and, and through the experience, there's, there's no known, quote, prescribed diet for, for melanoma that's specific or effective on its own. So we, you know, we, we're not going to go through this presentation and talk about a specific melanoma diet. Um, the goal really is to optimize our immune system and our health, um, to be able to accept the treatments that your physicians are, are prescribing for you. We do know a lot about the interaction between a healthy diet and response to immunotherapy. And that's something that some of the physicians later this afternoon, well, later this morning, are gonna talk about. Um, you know, Folks that have a healthier gut bacteria um, tend to have healthier immune systems. And that has now, we now know, um, thanks to the research done at our institution with Dr. Duvar and Dr. Zoror and all of the physicians, um, that there is a positive response to immunotherapy from those diets. Um, we know that the gut microbiome plays a huge role in the body's functions overall, not only for cancer, um, but for the immune system in general, um, for mental health, um, so there's a, there's a big diet. So you really, uh, connection. So you really are what you eat. Um, and to just further, um, this point, um, the gut body and connection really is kind of amazing. The more that I did research about, um, the gut microbiome, the further down the wormhole I got. So, um, I actually could do an hour long lecture about the gut microbiome now from all the information that I learned, um, your intestine has billions of bacteria. Actually, you have more bacteria in your colon than you do um, cells in your entire body. Um, we also know that 70% of your immune system is housed in the gut. Um, and this bacteria can be both good and bad. Um, each bacteria has a specific job and the bacteria comes, um, in the beginning, it comes from your environment. So you start developing this microbiome from the minute that you are born um, and you're exposed, the bacteria that you're exposed to, the place that you grow up, the foods that you eat um, throughout your lifetime impact this kind of collection of bacteria that you have in your body. Um, and so each specific thing has a specific job and they interact with each other. Um, we also know, which is really fascinating that 90% of the serotonin is produced and stored in the gut. So um, research um, moving forward has, has really flourished both in you know, harnessing this immunity that can occur, but also in treating mental um, health disorders like anxiety and depression, autism. So it's, it's really fascinating actually how much um, the gut is responsible for our function. Um, we do also know that inflammation in the gut can be attributed to several systemic conditions like diabetes, asthma, um, autoimmune conditions, um, mood disorders. So, so the gut is really super important in gut health. So how do we get a healthy gut? And why is this important 
um, for melanoma. I don't want to steal Dr. Devar's thunder, so I'm going to let him talk about, you know, all of the research that, you know, he's done um, in order to prove how melanoma and a healthy gut are connected. Um, but what we know is that eating the rainbow or eating a diet that is very rich in insoluble fiber especially plays an important role in um, overall health. I mean, there's no surprises here. Every nutrition study that you could read on heart health, gut health, mental health, all point to the same thing, that veggies are our superheroes. Um, how do we get this? So as you can see from the, the graphic, I know that the little words are kind of hard to read, but you know, white, we all know that green leafy vegetables are great for immune health. So yes, that's true. But also things, the red vegetables, the orange vegetables, the white vegetables, these all play an important role in immune health. Um, and, and what we have kind of learned over the last decade of studying the microbiome and gut health is that um, eating a variety of these fruits and vegetables and this insoluble fiber actually gives you the best bang for your buck because it, it causes a lot of diversity in, in the microbiome, which is extremely important because you need not just one kind of bacteria, like you don't just wanna have all you know, broccoli eating bacteria um, because you need all of the, the jobs, just like in our clinic, you need a doctor and a PA and a nurse and a you know, person to give you nutritional support and a mental health supporter. All of these things are important in taking care of you. Um, one of the other things to keep in mind is that it's really important to obtain these nutrients from food. Um, there have been a lot um, of studies, uh, nutrition-based studies, that have shown that it's much better to obtain nutrients um, that your body needs from food. Um, supplements don't necessarily have the same positive effects as their food counterparts. Um, that's been proven over, you know, gosh, 50 years of clinical trials and data. Um, the other thing is that some supplements um, provide doses that are overall overall greater than the recommended daily allotment, and they may interact with your medications and treatments. I know Darcy alluded to this a little bit. Um, you know, we're always going over patient records to try to make sure that their, you know, medications and herbs and things don't interact with um, their immunotherapy. Really the most um, important take home is that you can eat anything that you can eat is safe. So, um, you know, try to steer away from, from supplements and really get your, get your healthy diet from, from food. So here's some um, quick examples of what the you know, eating the rainbow provides. And, and I kind of tried to pick out the most important ones for cancer health. Um, so phytonutrients, we know that these are antioxidants. They work by being anti-inflammatory. They also are known to help repair DNA damage. Um, they can help in, enhance immunity and intercellular connect, communications between um, the immune system. Um, some examples of how you can get this. So, you know, a widely, um, you know, erroneous, thought process is that this is only green leafy vegetables. But as you can see, you can eat sweet potatoes and carrots, pumpkins, mangoes, cauliflower, cabbage, onions. Um, these are all also part of a um, prevention study because we know, um, and it's something that our clinic will probably um, be opening hopefully this fall. Um, and we had already done a smaller scale study showing that, um, you know, eating these types of foods can help actually prevent new melanomas from forming. So um, this is something that is extremely important in cancer cell, but all cancer care, but also especially in melanoma. Um, another um, important agent is retinol. This is vitamin A1. Um, it helps to decrease, I have to move my picture. It helps to decrease um, the risk for developing melanoma. Um, and we saw that in this you know, study, but also other non-melanoma skin cancers. It helps repair that DNA damage that is especially prevalent on the skin. Um, you can get retinol from things like oily fish, like tuna and mackerel. I've never actually eaten mackerel. I have no idea what it tastes like. Um, liver, mango, um, things like eggs and butter. Um, fortified skim milk also has retinol in it. And then your, your obvious green leafy vegetables, spinach and broccoli. Okay, so here's the other part that we know. And again, we're just gonna talk very briefly about this because Dr. Devar is gonna have a lot of this, I believe in his lecture later. Um, but the gut microbiome, you know, studies that have now spanned decades have shown that patients with a healthy gut have a healthier immune system. 
um, you know, the inflammation that can happen down in, and you can see my little graphic of processed foods and, you know, antibiotics and um, fast food that all causes really high levels of inflammation in your gut. And without getting too technical, and again, this could span, you know, hours of talking, um, that inflammation actually although it's local in your gut, creates an immune response that releases all these cytokines that then actually travel to other places in your body. And so, you know, avoiding things like processed foods um, is something that we always encourage, especially in, in our patient population um, with immunotherapy. Um, your gut microbiome obviously is determined by your environment, but you can actually change it. And there's this really cool study that they did um, where they gave patients meat for five days, and then they gave them vegetables for five days, and then they gave them meat again for five days. And what they saw is that their, their microbiome in the gut changed after just one day of eating meat. Um, a lot of the bacteria, healthy bacteria that we have identified as good, um, was destroyed after just a couple days of eating only meat. And so um, that's terrible. But what they also proved is that then after restarting a vegetable rich diet and avoiding those types of inflammatory foods, that gut bacteria was restored. So it's extremely um, encouraging in it. And it's encouraging that even if you spent most of your life eating McDonald's and Burger King and Wendy's, um, you can actually reset that gut bacteria pretty easily. Um, also, um, and again, our folks in the after, after break, we'll talk about this, but um, there have been many, many studies now in melanoma that have shown benefit to PD-1 and other immunotherapies responders with healthier and more diverse gut bacteria. There's studies out of our center, MD Anderson, Chicago, the NCI. Um, so this is becoming, you know, an extremely important part of planning therapy um, moving forward. So how do I get these good bacteria? We talked about this a little bit um, throughout the whole lecture already. Um, you wanna eat a diverse plant heavy diet. So fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, um, and really whole grains um, are important in terms of like brown rice and um, whole wheat bread, um, oatmeal. Um, you also wanna mix in healthy fats, olive oils, um, coconut oil, try to avoid processed oils like vegetable oil and peanut oil. Um, walnuts are a great source of healthy fats and avocados. Um, again, that whole grains, you really want to do as much, you know, percentage of whole wheat as possible. Um, another important part of the gut microbiome that we found are the fermenters. So everybody's really like keen on these prebiotics and probiotics, um, but you can get those from food. So um, things like pickles, um, kombucha, which I don't love, but I'm sure there's people that can drink it. Um, sauerkraut, the fermenters are really important to add in um, at least once a week um, in order to help diversify that microbiome as well. Um, you know, I get the question all the time, do I have to be a vegan? Um, no, you don't have to be a vegan. Um, you know, especially if we can just get you to eat more fruits and vegetables, I think that that is and will do, you know, more good than any of the other things that you can possibly do. So increase vegetables, decrease processed foods, and you're already winning. Um, you know, if you are going to pick proteins, eat, you know, lean meats. Um, if it's possible, eat, you know, organic and grass-fed. But, and honestly, that's just to avoid the hormones that are given to some of the, um, you know, animals that we eat every day. Um, and obviously avoid processed foods. The other important part of diet is actually making sure that you're well hydrated. All of your body systems rely on on water intake and, and keeping that hydration level high in order to function, our bodies are made up of, of water. So um, we always try to set a goal of about two liters of water for our patients. I know that's sometimes not always possible, um, but if you set a goal, sometimes you'll hit it and sometimes you won't. Um, and by that regard, avoiding really sugary drinks and alcohol primarily just to avoid that inflammatory response. Um, a little bit about supplementation. Um, this is tough, you know, supplements, are hard because they're not as well regulated as 
the other medications. There's a lot of unknown interactions. We talked about this already. One important one that is always brought up is, is vitamin D. And it's because, you know, we're wearing sunscreen, so we're not absorbing um, as much vitamin D in this melanoma population. Um, it needs to be tested. You just can't start taking vitamin D supplementation without knowing that you're vitamin D deficient because you can certainly get um, enough sun in the early, early morning or you know late afternoon, it only takes about 10 minutes to absorb enough um, vitamin D. It really isn't, you know, vitamin D isn't really great for getting um, out of your food. Um, so if you aren't getting that, you know, small burst of, of sun for 10 minutes, getting your mail, um, then certainly, you know, talk to your doctor about getting vitamin D tested because you really should, you know, know that you're deficient before just taking a supplement. Um, I did attach a couple of very basic videos here at the end um, about the microbiome, um, just to kind of get a better understanding of how our gut impacts our, you know, diet. Um, and there's, you know, several YouTube videos that you can watch um, just to get a better understanding of that. That's it. Let's talk about questions.